What's up, everybody? Go Burns! Discussing the world premiere of Mafia 3 at E3 last night. By the way, this entire video is linked below in the description section. It, along with the uh, E3 trailer for Mafia 3, can be found on the official Mafia YouTube channel. I didn't do a breakdown of the E3 trailer because I'd already done a breakdown of the teaser trailer and I felt like for the most part it was going to be redundant and that's why I didn't do it. And plus I was very busy yesterday. I was helping a friend of mine move and that was a adventure in itself. But anyways, we're going to go over this video, some of the things that we see, my thoughts regarding the world premiere of Mafia 3 at E3, which was of course hosted by IGN and Mafia 3 officially coming out October 7th for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. This is obviously kind of like a tourist thing, you know, for New Bordeaux mixed in with some cutscenes along with what we can expect from the game itself when it comes out in Mafia 3. And there was definitely a lot of information. So you most likely want to go check out this video. It's about 20 minutes long and it has a lot to offer if you're craving knowledge regarding Mafia 3. But we'll go over some things. I may miss a few things. It happens, okay? <laughs> so there's obviously some stuff in here we've seen before. This scene, that scene, this, of course, in the reveal trailer. And a lot has changed from the reveal trailer in August to, you know, the one-way road trailer in April to the E3 trailer that came out last night. So there's some differences and, you know, the look of Lincoln Clay is a little different. The looks of Burke and Cassandra are a little bit more different, see, as you can tell. But Vito looks completely different than what he looked in the reveal trailer. So we definitely have a much better look at Vito in this uh, video than we have in previous, uh, you know, videos. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. So this is Cassandra. She's the leader of the Haitians and one of the three lieutenants that will be under Lincoln Clay. And, of course, Burke... Leader of the Irish, and he once had ties to Marcano, but now his allegiance is to Lincoln, and they have kind of a history, I think. And of course, you got Vito Scaletta, the protagonist from Mafia 2, giving you a very good look as to what he will look like in Mafia 3 when it comes out in October, because there was a lot of mystery about what he was going to look like. So here's Cassandra, and obviously she's leader of the Haitian mobs, and there's, of course, Burke, as I mentioned, the leader of the Irish. And, of course, the big guy, the one we're all excited about, Vito Scaletta. And, yeah, I mean, they've changed this look a little bit since the reveal trailer. You know, so much so that in One Way Road, the guy that I said wasn't Vito turned out to be Vito. The only issue was they didn't have his freaking, you know, trademark scar in the One Way Road trailer for whatever rhyme or reason. But I guess they've resolved that issue. So now you see some gameplay here with uh, Lincoln driving one of his muscle cars through the bayou. Heading up to New Bordeaux. And a couple of thoughts here. You see the speedometer at the bottom. You see the mini-map to the right. And to the top, you see a rear-view mirror. And I honestly hope that we don't have to have the rear-view mirror. Maybe there's a way we could actually remove that. Because I feel like it's kind of obstructing the view. And it feels kind of weird. If we were in first person, I would totally get the, the rear-view mirror. But we're obviously driving in third person here. Now, I don't know if there's actually going to be first person... Uh, options in Mafia 3 when it comes out. I don't think there's gonna be, but that's one thing I can say right off the bat is I find that mirror, even though it's a, you know, obviously a very good rear view of what's behind you, I, I don't really see the point unless, for example, maybe there's some action going on that you actually need to see what's happening behind you. But here is a really good view of the map. We finally get to see the map of New Bordeaux and all the districts. I believe there's 10 all together. Of course, at the bottom you have uh, the bayou, and this is going to be the fun part. And it's been confirmed there are alligators lurking in the bayou, which you can use to you know feed uh, enemies to, or if you're not careful, they'll feast upon you. <laughs> so yes, the alligators are real, and if you're not careful, they will have you for lunch or dinner or whatever they're in the mood for, right? <laughs> So the bayou is going to be a lot of fun to explore. There's moonshiners, there's gun running going on in the bayou. Then uh, this other district over here, which is Delray. I believe Delray is where the Black Mob is. This is where Sammy Robinson's crew hangs out. So this is where you're going to spend probably the first few minutes of the game 
with uh, Sammy Robinson, obviously, the Black Mob. And, of course, you know, they're showing different aspects of Del Rey, the good parts, the bad parts, you know, just like with every district. So there's going to be some interesting stuff you'll be able to do in each district. And, of course, this district right here is Frisco Fields. And this is obviously where you want to live if you got money. If you want a nice house, if you want to live a nice lifestyle, high class, live in large, you want to live in Frisco Fields. This is where the big money in New Bordeaux happens to be. Unfortunately, there's you know some racism going on as well. And this is one of the factions in the game, the Southern Union, which has ties to the Marcano crime family. So it's not really going to hurt my feelings to uh, take out the Southern Union. So hopefully that's one of the things you'll be able to do in the game because I don't really give a shit about racists. I don't understand racists. That's kind of stupid. But anyways, one of the more fun districts is the French Ward. And the big guy is Lou Marcano, which is Sal's brother. And Lou Marcano basically runs the French Ward under Sal Marcano. He is one of his brother's capos. So yes, when it comes to the uh, sex trade in the French Ward, Lou's the guy. He's all about the you-know-what, <laughs> the good times. Uh, so this is one of the uh, ways you can tear down the mob. And, of course, we got a lot more detail regarding the map. And hopefully, Hangar 13 will actually eventually release like a PNG version of the map so we can actually get a better look at it. And we're going to go after the sex trade here. Personally, I don't have a problem with the sex trade, you know? As long, you know, as long as it's, uh, you know legal and clean and you know regulated you know <laughs> kind of like out in nevada i suppose anyway so you, the van will pull up you know from one of your lieutenants and from there you can select you know which weapons you want like explosives ammo for your weapons as well and then of course after that you have to kind of decide how do you wish to go in to this mission now the way they did in this uh, game through was they were going to go in stealth at first and then gun guns blazing so you could do either or you could do both you could go in guns blazing from you know the moment you walk in see you should really kill that guy right there that guy that we just walked by because he's a squealer and he's most likely going to call for reinforcements so we should have killed him well the person playing this should have killed him that's just my opinion just critiquing <laughs> alright so here we go Lincoln Clay setting up for the kill. <laughs> and die! All right, all right, so see? One of the lieutenants under Lou Marcano is now dead. Rip! <laughs> He's gone. So here's the weapon wheel, so you can pick out different weapons that you have at your disposal. And we're gonna go for the, uh, I guess the shotgun, I guess that's what he's gonna do here. Now, by the way, I watched this video several times. <laughs> Just in case I accidentally mi missed anything. So anyways, like if you look at the, uh, the right side where the mini-map is, the green bars, is your health so right now Lincoln has full health so that's what you want to keep an eye on whenever you're getting shot at so yeah okay so the guy called for reinforcements Lincoln should have killed him right away and now Marcano's thugs is showing up but there's another wheel you can access and there's different perks you know based on your lieutenants and one of them allows you to actually call Vito to get some help from the rebel Italians so that's what apparently Lincoln's gonna do is get the rebel Italians to come in as backup. So here comes the rebel Italians, and they're going to help take out the, um, you know, Marcano faction as well. So that's one of the perks that you can do in the game. If you need a little help, feel free and call up uh, Vito's boys, and they'll come and uh, <laughs> watch your six. It really just depends on what perks you end up getting, because at each sit down, which we'll discuss in a moment, you know, each one provides you a different sit down. So back at the map here. And this is a very impressive size map. I don't know how big it's going to be, say, compared to other games like uh, Grand Theft Auto V. But hopefully it'll be bigger than the map of Mafia 2 for Empire Bay. And a perfectly good boat blown up. That sucks. And of course, another thing you can do to bring down the uh, sex trade for Lou Marcano is robbing the orgy. <laughs> and of course, killing smack dealers. <laughs> Interrogating a pimp. <laughs> And, of course, capturing a brothel. So, yeah, all this is leading towards one goal. That's bringing down Lou Marcano. Of course, robbing the bag man and, you know, grabbing more of that awesome cash. Then, of course, capturing a drug den. <laughs> one step closer to the confrontation. Now, Lou, of course, is, you know, trying to go and kiss up to his brother. And Sal's not happy right now. He's kind of pissed. 
you know, because, you know, his brother, you know, is in his nice pink suit here, you know, is not doing so well. <laughs> and so uh, in order to, I guess, try and, you know, make it up to Sal, they're on a riverboat and uh, trying to raise some money for a re-election campaign for one of the uh, politicians that's in Sal Marcano's pockets. But it's not going so well because apparently uh, Lincoln Clay is about to uh, board the ferry boat. Now, what I don't understand is, did we really have to go to this shit here in order to board the ferry? Couldn't Lincoln Clay have snuck aboard the ferry boat without causing that kind of damage? <laughs> Video games, right? <laughs> so the guy on the left is the politician. The big guy is obviously Lou and his awesome pink jacket. Hey, you know, it takes, you know, really something, something to, you know, not be afraid to walk around with a pink, you know, suit like that. So anyways, apparently you can swim in Mafia 3, so swimming confirmed. Uh, just don't run into any alligators or... Uh, <laughs> It won't end so well for you. So a couple of people are leaping off the boat, off one of these uh, ferry boats, river boats. And uh, yeah, so this boat's kind of busted, wrecked just a little. So Lincoln's sneaking in here to this main hall, and he's going to pick off a few of the guys all stealth-like, being all sneaky before he gets close enough to launch a strike. Now, if you look like really far down up the stairwell, if you, if you like have eagle vision like I do, I think so, uh, Lou is up there on the stairwell bossing people around or trying to reassure people that things are going to be okay. It's just an accident. Now, I'm curious as to something. Now, in a minute, you're going to see Lincoln actually pursuing Lou throughout the ship. But could you simply just pull out a sniper rifle and just pop Lou in the head and just be done with it? I wonder if you're going to have that option because they say that we have many options on how to accomplish missions. In Mafia 3, so I would much rather just, you know, get Uncle Lou right there on the stairwell. Just, you know, just murder him right there. Blast his head off and, you know, have his fat body just tumble down to the ground. Okay, that was mean. That was insensitive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lou. But whatever. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that will be an option is that we can actually do that. Instead of going through all this trouble to, you know, you know, go through this firefight throughout the ship, which is fun, I will say that, but at the same time, it does feel kind of restricted if we have no choice but to chase Lou. I'd rather just, you know, like I said, I'd rather just pull out a sniper rifle, pop him in the head, and uh, be done of it. But let me know below in the comment section because I'm curious about something. What did you think of the Mafia 3 E3 World premiere? Let me know below in the comment section. And once again, check out the Mafia YouTube channel for uh, this video as well as the E3 trailer video. And once again, I do apologize for not doing a breakdown of the E3 trailer video. I was going to, but I was really tired last night after helping my friend move. Like I said, it was a long day yesterday and I barely got back in time to catch the world premiere. And I, I felt like it was mostly redundant because I mean, there was some new stuff in the trailer that wasn't in the E3 teaser trailer, but at the same time, I just felt like I, I don't want to do that. So anyways, a lot of it's stuff we've already seen. There was a few new things. For example, we know the, I mean, I know the name of the priest now. I mean, we may have already known about that, but his name is Father James. So in case you're wondering what his name, Father James, you know, the guy that saves Lincoln from the fire when uh, Sal Marcano betrays Sammy Robinson and slaughters the black mob, leaving Lincoln Clay for dead to burn in the ashes of Sammy's bar. You know, Father James is the one who saves Lincoln, you know, takes him into hiding, and of course, nurses him back to health, so... Anyways, we're up here on the ship fighting. As you can tell from the health bar on the right side, you know, he's only down to like one bar left because he's taken some damage. And if you look at the bottom left hand, you see the two weapons currently at Lincoln's disposal. His uh, pump action shotgun as well as a pistol. Now he's taking some damage. So over here, Lincoln will, I guess he heals himself. So I guess you have the ability to heal yourself with a health pack or a candy bar or, or something. <laughs> That's one thing I'm curious about. Does it automatically, like, is it like um, Red Dead Redemption in that regard where the, the health meter will naturally go back up? It seemed to go back up really fast, though, so I guess you have to actually have, like, Band-Aids or health packs or, or something on you in order to, uh, you know, get you back to being, you know, full fighting form. I don't know. That was one thing I was curious about when I was watching it a few times. Okay, so there's been a couple jumps throughout the mission, and that's one thing I, I will say here. I feel like that they're showing an awful lot of this game. And some people may like that, but I kind of don't like it because I want some mystery. Now, I'm pretty sure there's probably plenty of mystery left in the game. 
a lot more uh, action, hopefully. Hopefully, it's going to be a pretty long game, like at least maybe 10 plus hours, hopefully. So, we're only seeing one snippet, but the fact that, you know, we're seeing what's going to happen to Lou, Sal Marcano's brother, you know, kind of spoils things a little bit, just a little, in my opinion. So, I, I want to see gameplay, but at the same time, I guess I'd rather see random gameplay in order to, you know, not be spoiled too much. I, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Like, for example, like they've shown some other stuff as well that transpires. And you're like, well, okay, well, this kind of sucks because I already know about this and this and this. I mean, specifically, what happens to the Black Mob? I mean, I feel like that maybe Hangar 13 had no choice but to show that part. But, I mean, it, in the end, it was a decision that they made. And, you know, hopefully there's still plenty to go through regarding the uh, story where it's still interesting. And I think it's going to be fun to play. I think it's going to be a lot of excitement going on, of course. Lou now trapped up at the top of the uh, boat along with uh, the politician. <laughs> and, of course, uh, Lincoln doesn't give a shit about the politician. Of course, you know, to be honest, I don't really give a shit about most politicians either. <laughs> uh, such a sad end to a beautiful boat. <laughs> uh, all right, time to die, Lou. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, explosions! Oh, that's a way to go. Being cooked alive. <laughs> How do you like your politician? <laughs> Extra crispy? <laughs> okay, so this is an interesting scene here. Obviously a cutscene from what just happened up there. Now, it goes back to the, to the question, like, could I have simply just killed Lou at the stairwell and been done with it? I guess we'll find out one way or the other. And so the ferry boat's on fire now. The river boat, whatever you want to call it. And, um... This is the only weapon that Lincoln has left, okay? He did have bullets. You know, he did have a pistol and a shotgun, but because of that explosion, they took the ammo away from him. I think he even took the weapons away from him. So you can lose your weapons in certain scenes, which means Lincoln has no choice but to go all stealthy-like, all, you know, like Army Ranger, you know, having, you know, Vietnam flashbacks through the jungle in order to get behind Lou and murderize him. One thing I really wish that could happen in this scene was maybe some random shit where there happened to be an alligator and you wouldn't even have to worry about Lou because some alligator would jump his ass. <laughs> like you're walking up to him and you think you're about to kill him. You get like, you know, this far away. And then all of a sudden, boom, an alligator just comes up and just grabs him and just pulls him back into the water. And then that's the end of Lou. <laughs> uh, so that was one of the concerning scenes I had here whenever I saw this last night was like exactly what is going to transpire here is there going to be an alligator waiting a little surprise we don't know but anyways so th this is um obviously not a good position for lou to be in doesn't even realize he's done for you're doomed <laughs> uh rest in peace lou <laughs> bye bye <laughs> Oh, yeah, well. I, I don't think Sal's going to be too happy about his brother getting killed, though. I, I can't imagine him being happy about that. I mean, having his, you know, you know, street thugs or his lieutenants and regular capos killed is one thing. But to have his own flesh and blood murdered here at uh, the old general statue, yeah. So that kind of sucks for uh, poor Lou. Rest in peace. Okay, so here's a sit down. And this is what usually happens after you take over uh, a property from Sal Marcano, you have to give it to one of these three lieutenants, either Vito, Burke, or Cassandra. Now, depending on who you end up favoring can cause ramifications. Now, each one offers you different perks depending on the property you're offering. But if you give too much property to one of the characters over the other characters, one of them may actually turn on you. So some people are like, uh, well, I'm gonna give more property to Cassandra. I'm gonna give more property to Vito. But my strategy is to try and keep everybody happy. So I'm going to be like, you know, Vito, Cassandra, Burke. Vito, Cassandra, Burke. I'm going to try and keep it balanced because I want to, you know, see how that plays out. Because it revolves several scenarios. Like, you can end up, you know, I guess whittling it down to maybe only having like one lieutenant left. Or you can somehow manage to keep all three of them around depending on how you distribute the properties. So that's the way I'm gonna play. Let me know below in the comments section, who are you gonna favor more? Vito, Cassandra, or Burke? Now, Burke comes across as the hothead, the one who's more easily pissed off if you screw him. 
So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. And, and some of the animation regarding Vito here looks kind of weird. I'll say that right now. This looks... I hope that Hangar 13 is, is still working on the animation. Now, the animation for Cassandra looks pretty good. Vito, I don't know. There's just something there. It looks strange. I don't know. It just looks odd. But Burke seems to look okay. And, you know, Cassandra looked fine. But, I don't know. Hopefully Vito will be um, tweaked a little bit. But see now, Burke is pissed because... Lincoln once again passed him over and gave the property to Vito instead. So Burke is now an enemy of Lincoln in this scenario. And once again, you can check out the video for yourself below in the description section. It is via the Mafia YouTube channel. This along with the Mafia E3 trailer and all the Mafia trailers all up at the official Mafia YouTube channel. So let me know below in the comment section, what do you think about Mafia 3 after the E3 world premiere last night? Do you have a better idea of whether or not you're uh, going to get it? Is it make you, you know, craving it more? Has it built up the hype? Have, you know, some parts of it been somewhat disappointing for you? Feel free and let me know below in the comment section. And don't forget, Mafia 3 coming October 7th to Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC.